Famous at home and abroad, Van Eyck signed all of his works, which was an exceptional practice for Northern Europe at the time. He was an exceptionally well-paid artist and was predominantly commissioned by private parties. Patrons were indeed so pleased with his finished work that they paid Van Eyck an additional sum of 500 kronen or groats. In terms of his legacy as an artist, Jenny Graham's Inventing Van Eyck, The Remaking of an Artist for the Modern Age, claims that Van Eyck's reputation was made to shift from a medieval to a Renaissance artist during the mid-19th century, whose rejection of Gothic constraints in favor of realism, proportion, and perspective mark the birth of the modern age. Furthermore, Graham praises Van Eyck for his particular power in lay and keen penetration into actual fact. A new absorption of the symbolic element into the overall naturalism of the scene began to replace the overtly fantastical symbolism of the Middle Ages. Along these lines, it is also generally known that the revivalist cultures of the 1840s spurred an Arnolfini portratus arrival at the Louvre. This exhibition ultimately meant that Van Eyck's name became popularized throughout the world. The reason behind his mass appeal was based on the fact that he was not a mere realist in the ordinary sense. A realist is a man who looks at his subject and sets down the superficial appearance of the thing. Instead, his pictures are the visible expression of thought, not reflections of sight. In addition, the Arundel Society, which was a purist organization formed in 1848, devoted to promoting early European art through cheap prints, made Van Eyck's pieces accessible to the public. A statue of Van Eyck was erected in Bruges City Center in 1900 as an embodiment of the city's distant past and part of the city's fabric in the present. During his lifetime, Van Eyck was one of the highest paid painters that worked under privately commissioned projects for both church and the elite. What was particularly striking about his piece, Madonna and Child with Canon von der Pyel, is its intense detail, symbolism, and innovation. For example, this painting plate relies on so-called illuminated manuscript, meaning that the painting itself is bordered and decorated ornately. Moreover, the painting is marked by its usage of illusionism. This practice indicates that a work of art shares the same physical space as the viewer. Lastly, Madonna and Child with Canon von der Pyel is regarded as such a remarkable piece because for the first time in Flemish painting, Van Eyck has assembled a company of ecclesiastical and holy figures and patrons in a church interior. It is interesting to consider this accomplishment in light of the Nazi regime. Certainly, Hitler strived to be almighty and to align himself with the higher power in order to legitimize the extermination of Jews in Europe. The Madonna and Child with Canon van der Pyel is a theologically complex painting. It shows the Virgin and Child enthroned beneath a broad baldachin. Saint Donation, as patron saint of the Bruges Collegiate, is granted the heraldically more important place on the Virgin's, Virgin's left. Opposite him, on the other side of the throne, kneels the donor, holding a prayer book and a pair of glasses in his hands. Canon van der Pyel is commended to the Virgin and Child by his patron saint, Saint George, who is clad in a magnificent suit of golden armor. St. George raises his helmet in greeting and gestures with his left hand towards the donor, who is gazing straight ahead with an absent expression. The scenery is once more set within a sacred interior, and von Eyck again takes up the formal language of Romanesque architecture. The setting resembles both the choir of St. Donations itself, which is now destroyed, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, and thereby, thereby emphasizes the Eucharistic symbolism underlying the composition. The Virgin's throne namely stands on precisely the spot reserved in a real church for the altar. In this way, von Eyck illustrates the idea widespread in his day, that the Virgin symbolized the altar and the infant Christ both host and Eucharist. This symbolism is further underlined by the cloth spread across the Virgin's red robes on which the naked infant Christ is seated. Even more obvious than in Roland Madonna, the motif refers to the veiled host during the celebration of Mass and to the sacrament of the Eucharist symbolizing Christ's death and resurrection. The two halves of the composition contain symmetrical references to Christ's death and resurrection, assigning them in formal terms to St. Donation on the left and St. George on the right.
It is no coincidence that the attributes accompanying the two saints are respectively a reliquary cross alluding to the Holy Cross and the St. George's flag resembling the banner of the risen Christ. Von Eich illustrates the Marian metaphor of the unspotted mirror in a very literal way by making the Virgin's reflection appear on several parts of St. George's highly polished armor. An unusual Marian symbol, lastly, is the parrot, regarding the theologians as a talking creature that could say the word Ave. The bird thus serves as a reminder of the angelic greeting at the Annunciation and thus of the beginning of the New Covenant. Furthermore, there are numerous strokes that depict sculptures of biblical stories throughout the painting. These sculptural details may also be meant to stress the power of the church in both spiritual and earthly realms. On the right arm of the Virgin's throne is a sculpted group of Cain killing, Cain killing Abel, which can be taken to allude to Christ's, Christ's death. In addition, there is the sculpture just to the right of Donation's cross. Here, more, most clearly portrayed, we see the sacrifice of Isaac and also perhaps the meeting of Abraham and Melchizedek. On the other side of the painting are scenes of victory. Samson rending the jaws of the lion on the left arm of the Virgin's throne, David's defeat of Goliath, and perhaps Abraham's defeat of the Elamites, or the armies of Shedolomer, on the distant historical capital. These events held out the church's promise of resurrection and defeat of the devil and death. They may also have reinforced the mission of St. George, supporter of the church militant and church as political, as a political and military force with which to be reckoned. It is clear from our research that this painting holds numerous points of religious significance. As a result, it makes perfect sense that Hitler would fight for its acquisition. In the Nazi regime's opinion, Madonna and Child with Canon von der Pyel served as a symbol of the Belgian people's pride and sense of identity. It is undeniable the amount of cultural importance that this work held in and of itself, therefore indicating a central motivation for the Nazis' desire to take it. There are three possible fates of this masterpiece. It may have been destroyed by the Nazis. However, there is also a possibility that it is in the possession of an individual unknowingly or has been traded in an underground market. At the moment, we are unable to tell you its precise location, but we hope that this ongoing search will continue and hopefully be able to gain some insight on its whereabouts.